Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you a new rig from Digital Photo. Uh, I already reviewed a bunch of their products and this is a new thing that they came up with that allows you to get orbital shots, like I guess mainly product shots, although you could use it for other things. Uh, and this is basically what it comes with. Uh, this and this background. Now you can obviously use your own different backgrounds. This one's kind of this reflective black and then matte black, which I'm going to test out. You have your platform up here. Uh, right away, I'll tell you that, you know, just putting it together. The cool thing about it is that it, you really don't need any tools. Uh, I mean, they give you actually, no, sorry. They give you one Allen key, this little Allen key. And that, that thing you'll only need, I guess only the first time when you're attaching the main plate. Uh, so basically tighten that one screw. But otherwise the rest of the things you have actual like hand knobs so you can tighten and loosen it that way and move it around and then Essentially, like I said, you have your platform here. You're going to put your product or item. So for example, me, I do a lot of product reviews. I can get a shot of the product. Let's say whether I want to have the camera moving slowly left to right, but always be at the same basically distance. So let's say the focus doesn't change then it's good for that. Or if you want to do a complete 360, as you can see, you can just kind of swing it around. It's not motorized in any way. It's just you just push it with your hand. Um, but it's, you know, it's simple enough. You can kind of, because it moves so, I guess, smoothly, you, it's easy to kind of control the speed. You can make it go really slow. You can make it go really fast, right? It's really up to you. Um, so that's the main platform and this shaft here, which is attached to the base. The base is pretty heavy. So it's not something that you're going to be like always traveling with, I guess. Now, the good thing about the base is that it keeps everything steady. Uh, because once you start adding all the things and this whole thing can become pretty pretty heavy so you want to have a good stable base it does have rubber uh, basically stoppers here on the bottom i don't know if you guys can see that uh, and those are actually good because again it will not slide see like it moves the whole table now aside from the platform and the main shaft here the whole thing is sort of built around these two rods that they give you uh, and they allow you to kind of attach and customize this whole rig so you can obviously move it up here, you can loosen that, I can move it back and forth. You can see I can move it this way more, so if I want to have the camera further out, I can do it that way, or you know, if I want to have this further out with the background. Here you're going to mount the camera, it comes with like this, again, a shaft for the camera and a ball head, so you can adjust it. Now this thing is probably not going to have like a cinema camera, unless it's like these, those really small cinema cameras. But in this case, actually, I have the Sony a7S III uh, with the 24 to 70 mil lens. And then I also have the camera cage and a wireless transmitter. So it's not the lightest package. So uh, I guess we'll see how it performs with that and if it's steady and smooth. Uh, but basically, this is where you're going to attach the camera. You also have this other attachment here. And again, keep in mind that it's using standard cinema rails, so you can attach other accessories, obviously. But this is what it comes with. It has a 3 8 and quarter 20 threads up here. Uh, so it means that you can attach, let's say, like a magic arm, right? Let's say if you want to have maybe, I don't know, another light here or a filter or something, you can always attach things. And then on top of that, you also have, you can see up here, you have another quarter 20 attachment here on this side too. Uh, and in this case, I already attached uh, the base for the iFootage magic arm. So that will allow me to kind of put a light that's going to be like an edge light. I want to put one. For this test right now, I'm going to use uh, this Lumix S5 uh, camera as my product. Uh, and, I, uh, you know, especially when I'm shooting, for example, a, a camera products, which are usually black, uh, and you're shooting it, let's say, on a black base and against a black background, I usually will want to have some kind of an edge light that kind of separates it. So that's where I'm going to use this magic arm and, uh, and I'm going to just put this little light kind of behind it to light that product. But obviously, as the camera rotates, I always want that edge light to be there. Now, my overall key light is this China ball that I have up here. Uh, this is from iFootage. It's their angler lights. Uh, serious, I have that, and I do have another little light there, uh, also from iFootage, which is kind of lighting me for the behind the scenes, but it's obviously providing some light here. But I could have another light and another light, and that's the cool thing about this setup is it allows you to have a stationary product, but you can have the camera going perfectly in circle, keeping the same distance from your product, and like I said, you can go 360 degrees without moving the lights. Now, in some cases, like I said, 
when you want to attach a little edge light, then you can still do that because you can attach it to the platform. Now, obviously you could just get a 360 shot of a product by putting it on a little turntable, for example, and just having that product move. And then you can have your camera stationary and your lights and all that stuff. And for many situations, that will be totally fine. This kind of a setup is more for where you want to be able to, uh, like I said, move the camera around, but not have the lighting on the, your actual subject change. Because like I said, like if I don't put the edge light in here, and then I can set up all my lights and the product, the lights, everything stays the same. It's just the camera that changes. So this way the shadows won't move on your product and things like that. Also, another thing is, for example, if you're doing um, like, like, let's say you're putting some kind of an object here that you're shooting that lets, has maybe liquids or some, some particles or something that could be basically would be moving if you had it on a turntable. So that's where this kind of setup is, is good for that. Um, the whole thing, I would say, is, is kind of hinders on the on just how good the the ball bearing here is. It's kind of almost like a like a Steadicam shaft. Like I said, you have the shaft, and you can loosen this, so you can move it up and down. So you can also adjust this way relatively the height of the camera to to your product. So you can move it up and down, and then you just tighten it here, and then you have a ball bearing. And it's fairly easy like, to move it up and down, even with the weight of the camera already when I was testing it. So I think I'm going to put it this distance, or this height, I guess, relative. And like I said, I can move the camera closer or further if I actually move all the rails back, which I could, so maybe I will. Maybe I want a bit more of a distance there. Somewhere there should be good. And, uh, you know, again, you don't need to have a background. You could just show the, the background. But in my case here, the background is never interesting. So I am going to put a background. And the one that they give you is this kind of reflective and matte black. I'm trying to see if the reflective. Nah, I don't think it's going to be good because I do have a lot of lights here. and. Uh, I don't want the other lights in the studio here reflecting, so I'll use the matte side. And to tighten the background, it's fairly simple. You just have these two knobs here. And that, and then you have, do have counterweights just to kind of offset, so make sure that it, this whole thing, you know, is stable. So I'm going to try to adjust my angle, and you guys can see everything here in the monitor. Mm -hmm. There, okay. I think that should be good. And I can roll on this. Do my first sort of shot here. So as you can see, I can do nice sort of slight, smooth shots going left to right of the product. And go, let's say, the other way. So I just push it lightly with my hand and it just keeps on going. And do the other way. Now, obviously, to get it even uh, basically slower, like really slow moving product shot, you can, uh, I mean, you just have to be really t light with the, with the pushing, or you could uh, just shoot it in high speed, right? So, and that's another actually cool thing I'll tell you guys that I, I kind of right away when I saw this product, that for example, it allows you now to get uh, like let's say these these sort of close-up shots of especially if you're doing like foot you know photography or, or shots uh, video shots where for example you have you know like let's say I don't know things dropping on a plate and or liquids you know pouring in a glass and you want it to look like nice and you have that you know that depth and that dimension to it uh, but also have the camera moving then you can set the camera in, in high speed mode record really high frame rate and then just move this really fast and have it spinning really fast while you're recording and you're going to get this really cool then once you play it back at a, a slower frame rate you're going to get this really cool effect of the camera suddenly moving but also having all of that motion there happening so so now i'm going to do a 360 shot so i'm just going to push this and let it go and uh, it looks stable enough so hopefully the camera doesn't fall off <laughs> we can just watch it there on the monitor yeah, it looks pretty cool. You can just let it go until it stops. So 
that's definitely a, a cool way to get a product shot. So you see now it's like slowing down so you can see it's getting really slowly. Now my table here is not perfectly level and that's why you can see that eventually it just stops and starts moving the other direction. So I'm getting another shot. See with just one, one push, I'm getting uh, two versions of this shot. Now I'm gonna add the little edge light. But like I said, in, in, if I had all stationary lights here, and if I put an uh, edge light there, and then it would obviously be getting blocked every so on by that um, by the background there. And if you know, once the camera moves to a at a certain angle, that edge light would then become a key light, right? So that's why, in some cases, you want to be able to attach these lights and actually have it rotating with this whole setup. So that's why I'm going to use this iFootage Magic Arm. If you guys haven't seen that uh, that car mount video that I did, this is what these are from. You can get their longer versions too. And these things are awesome. They just make attaching things so much easier. Okay, it's attached there. And we will attach this guy here. Okay, and there it should be good. Yep. You see, now I'm not, I'm not always going to get this nice sort of edge light. And again, I could attach two of these little lights here so I can have edge light from both sides. But let's get a let's roll on this take, see how it looks. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Because, like I said, all the, all the other lights are stationary, but that edge light you can see always creates that nice little subtle edge on the camera, kind of helping to separate it from the background. So now I flipped that background, so it's actually that reflective side uh, of that black background. And it does have a cool look, except in my case I can't really use it because uh, if you guys look at it, like especially once it goes like somewhere here, you're gonna see, like basically you're seeing it against the white walls, you see the reflections there uh, of actually the ring, well of, ev of everything. So you can definitely use reflective background and you can even have this be reflective, but you, then you wanna be shooting in like a proper blacked out studio which in this case I have really bright walls so now I just simply put a, a white piece of styrofoam board so I'm getting a white background uh, and again I think it's a cool looking shot and obviously like I said you can use any kind of solid color background or a texture background whatever it is that you want uh, for these kind of shots and uh, you know or, or or you can do it without background even like I said if you have a nice surrounding but that's the cool thing about this rig, is that it allows you to do that, right? You have all those different options. So now I swapped out for an all white background. Now I didn't do the best job cutting the foam cord and I don't have another one, but it kind of you know, it illustrates the, the point. I guess that you can get this sort of a white uh, kind of studio setup, but the cool thing is that obviously you can go all around the product, right? You don't have to worry about like the lights or something, you know, showing up in the other angle because you always have that background moving with you. So that's the kind of cool thing about this. And it's a pretty cool looking shot. And as you can see, it's fairly quick to set up. I guess the cool thing about this too is that like once you have this, let's say in your studio, especially if you're doing a lot of product shots like I am doing for a lot of these reviews, by having this kind of a setup in your studio, which doesn't take up that much space, you can just kind of leave your lights already in place and you can always jump in here and you can get the shot pretty quickly. Just take off this product, put in another. If you want a different color background, you can do that. Uh, and you can get all these different versions of the shot. I also got this green board, which uh, basically would allow you to, again, to put this in there and then essentially with this one, you can take out the green, the chroma, and, uh, and you can get any kind of background that you want, uh, you know, behind your your product so that's another option so right now i just have the the camera rotating but without any background attached on the other side and as you can see it works you can get a shot obviously the shot will look more interesting if you have a more of an interesting background but it still works so as you guys can see definitely is a lot of different options with this uh, also keep in mind that you don't have to do obviously a small product like that i mean you could you can go in really really close uh, or you can get something even bigger on this platform. Like I said, you can make the platform bigger because you can always move that background further or just do it without an attached background. Like right now, I'm on a full frame camera. I'm on 70 millimeter lens. 
uh, you know, zoomed in all the way. So you can see that's the kind of framing I'm getting. If I go on like a 50 mil, you can see this is how wide it is. Obviously you're seeing the platform, so then you have to make a, basically put something else in here to make a, a wider platform, which again, you can do. Um, and uh, yeah, this gives you a lot of different possibilities. So definitely if you're looking to do a lot of uh, product shots and you want to be able to do it quickly, uh, efficiently, then I would say this is, this is something, you know, it's, it's kind of a, it's a very simple in a way device, uh, but it's just kind of, you know, and I'm sure many people have already built something similar like that, but it's good to finally see a company to actually just make one product that you can just buy this, it's affordable, easy to use, like I said, easy to customize, but it comes with everything really that you need uh, to start getting product shots. And, uh, and then you can do it repetitively really quickly with just a standard setup here uh, that is gonna allow you to again, jump into the studio, get different product shots, you know, and, and send the, the shots out to your clients. Uh, or post it online or whatever it is that, that you need to do with it. So anyways, if you guys are interested, you wanna find more info, as always, the links are in the description or you can head on over to my website at tomatosfilms.com. Anyways, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.